uh, we can get a, a, a whole new idea in calculus. So for the past five months, you've been uh, focusing on derivatives. Derivatives, you can just set those aside right now. So this is a this is an entirely new topic. We're, we're, there, you can set derivatives completely aside. And as we talk about some of these things, you're, you're kind of going to start to think, well, well, what pieces do I really have to focus on? Every single little bit is, is really something that does tie in as we move forward. And the big question that we want to ask at this point that we had you look at yesterday is what is the area underneath this curve? Uh, you don't have a formula, do you? I mean, we found the area of triangles, right? Found the area of trapezoids, of circles, all those things. Now, uh, our, our friends back there, they, they estimated the area very, very accurately yesterday, right? So like near a thousand. That was, that was very impressive, okay? So that's the big idea. We want to be able to find this area. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start just, just one way, and, and this is kind of, a, kind of one way to think about it, but what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to draw some boxes. You know how to find the area of boxes? Okay, so if you draw this, realize it might be difficult for you to erase it. You might want to wait to draw until we get to kind of the one that's really going to fine tune it. So we'll try this first one, okay? And uh, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a box at one. Can I figure out the height of that box? What's the height of the function at one? It's exactly three. How did you get that? Yeah, if I, if I plug it in, if I plug in 1, I take square root of 1, and I get 1, multiply, I get 3. Everybody agree that that area right there is 3? Good. Is that an overestimation or an underestimation? Definitely an overestimation. Would everybody agree? Okay, definite overestimation. We're all on the same page here, right? All right, so, well, let's try something else. Um, I'm going to draw a box at 4. Can I figure out the height at 4? What's the height at 4? It's 6. And so then what would the area of that box be? Yeah, it would be 18, right? Because you have, you know, this 3 there and 6 for the height. Where do you think I'm going to draw my next one? I'm going to try 9. Because the square root of 9 is... 3 times 3 is 9. And so what's what's the area of that going to be? Yeah, I, I, get, I get 45 out of that guy. And then, you know, maybe you're just like, well, you know, this is a, about about 9 units there. Wait, we okay with that? So, I mean, what, so is this an overestimation or an underestimation? It's an overestimation. You can see that vividly by the drawing, correct? And so if we add these up, 3 and 18 makes 21. Uh, add to that, I get uh, 30. And then 45 makes, makes 75. So 75 is my estimation right now. And you all say that that's too big, right? Okay. Well, I, I'm going to just switch it up a little bit. Because there's, there's, there's all sorts of ways to do it. At the end of the day, folks, we are going to use rectangles to find the area. And... Uh, even though we're not exact right now, it, it's still important to understand this approximation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do it differently at this point. I am going to do um, uh, two rectangles. If I do two rectangles and I want them to have the same width, I want them to have the same width, where would I draw the height at? What would be the width of each rectangle if I'm going to put two yeah, five, right? So that's one rectangle. Overestimation or underestimation? Definite overestimation. Everybody agreed? Way over. Now I'm going to draw the next one up here. Overestimation, right? Let's see if we can calculate that area though and the way we calculate area is you take the base times the height correct so what's the base here five times whatever the height is what's the base here five times whatever the height is 
how do I figure out the height? What do I plug into the function? I plug in 5, I get 3 roots of 5, right? So I get um, 3 times the root of 5. And if I plug in 10, I get 3 roots of 10. So I'm going to take out my calculator. Make sure you have that out because you're, you're going to help me out here pretty quickly. I take this guy and glance at it. I get five, or I get fifteen roots of five plus fifteen roots of ten. So we get eighty point nine seven. Pretty bad estimation, right? So what I would like to do is I would like to come up with a new estimation that would be better. And in order to come up with a new estimation that would be better, I'm going to draw a total of five rectangles. I'm going to increase the number of rectangles. You all, you all good with that? So if I want to draw five rectangles, what's going to be the width of each rectangle? The width of each rectangle is going to be two. So we have one rectangle, Two rectangles, three rectangles, four rectangles, five rectangles. Now, what's interesting about this, okay, because I'm going to kind of show you a shortcut to work through it a little bit. What's interesting about this is if you look at my interval right here, I drew the height of the rectangle from the right hand side, right? If you look at your interval right here, I drew from two up. I And then over here I drew from four up. Look at how I'm going to the right hand side and I'm drawing up. You don't always have to do that. You don't always have to do that. I'm gonna now calculate the area, okay? So I need a, I need a go-to person with a calculator so we can save on time here. Who's my go-to person with a calculator? All right, student in the court. Riker is already volunteered. What we're going to do is we're going to do two times. I need the height at two. 4.24. Plus two times, I need the height at four. Six. Plus two times, I need the height at six. 7.34. Plus two times, I need the height at eight. 8.485 plus 2 times, now I need the height at 10. 9.486. Now, look at what Riker has here, which is kind of interesting. Is Notice how every single one of these has a 2 times. So we could factor that out, and we could say it's going to be 2 times the sum of all the heights. So it's just 2 times 4.24 plus 6 plus 7.34 plus 8.49 plus, you know, 9.49. And, and that actually reduces our work, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to add that up. The next one you're going to do on your own. I'm going to show you here in a second. You don't have to draw it yet. I'll tell you when you should start drawing. Okay, I got 71.12. That that's that's closer to the actual amount, isn't it? Is that an overestimation or an underestimation? It's definitely an overestimation. Watch what I'm going to do now. I'm going to draw another set of rectangles, but instead of drawing the height at the right side of the subinterval, I'm going to draw the height at the left side of the interval. Well, what's the height here? Zero. And then the height here would be at two, right? Then the height here would be at four. 
then the height here would be at six. The height here, I'd draw at eight, and that'll be my last one. Is that an overestimation or an underestimation? Underestimation. So you simply need to take two times the sum of the heights. Go ahead and see if you can figure out that. So you can figure it out. If you can't, you can't. Try. Try. Go. We're now going to divide you into two groups. We're going to split you right. We're going to split you right here. Okay. So you're on that side. Always on that side. You got it. You're, you're on the. You're on this side. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. That was intentional, by the way. Okay. So, um, group on this side. You're gonna do the first set of rectangles that I draw. Okay. Yep. So you guys are the blue group. You got that. We are going to do a total of ten. Rectangles. Would you agree that 10 would be better than 5? Now, if we do 10, what's the width of each rectangle? 1. So it's just 1 times the sum of the heights. So you only need to add up the heights. So you are the blue group. You are going to do these rectangles. All the way on over to here. You guys are the green group. You guys are going to do the green rectangles. Draw whatever you want. Whatever helps you as a student. Okay, I just kind of drew the first and the last and draw everything in between. Please try to figure out a result and then share it with somebody next to you so you can come up with it. And we need one answer for both groups so we can feel like we're confident in this answer, okay? Go ahead. What you're actually gonna need to do for your assignment and your test. Flip your notes over to this part. This is the big question that comes up in calculus, the second part. This is called integral calculus. We just got through differential calculus. And the question is, what is the area beneath f of x bounded by a and b? Seems like a basic question. When you think about it, you're like, well, that seems really difficult because we don't have a formula for area like that. And so what we do is we just say, well, let's take things that we know the area of. And let's start with the most basic thing, which is, without a doubt, a rectangle. So we're going to use rectangles to approximate those. And so far, what I had you guys do is I had one group really draw their rectangles to the right-hand side, and I had another group draw the rectangles to the left-hand side. We're going to build more on that tomorrow, but for today, we're going to stick straightly with the right-hand side. So are you ready? Let's go. Find the area bounded between the curve f of x equals x squared, the x-axis, and the line x equals 4 by constructing two rectangles, four rectangles, and eight rectangles. What does the graph f of x equals x squared look like? Basic parabola. So I draw this parabola, and I'm going to bound it from 0 all the way over to 4. I would like to find that exact area. We don't know how to do the exact area. So we're going to estimate it by drawing different numbers of rectangles. So on this test, if you know how to draw rectangles and find areas, you can have the chance to be able to score really, really well. But you're also going to have to know how to deal with an infinite number of rectangles. And you know what? It's not that bad. This is generally a very, very, very high scoring test. Okay? So let's get busy. What is the width of our interval? It is 4. So what will be the width of each rectangle if we do two rectangles? It will be two. So I'm going to put a mark here at two. This is where people get confused and lost, and they end up having questions going into the test. They're like, I never knew that. You have two intervals. Look, this is one. This is two. 
for today, you're doing right hand rectangles, which means when you look at that interval, you go to the right hand side of it and you draw the height of your rectangle there. I go to the right hand side, I draw the height of the rectangle there. I don't have to take two times each one manually. I can simply just do two times the quantity of the sum of the heights. Agreed? I can just add up the sum of the heights because it's going to be two times each one. So it ends up being this formula with times sum of the heights. That's if the width is the same. And right now we're keeping the width the same. There are small situations where we do change the width. We'll show you that when it comes to the AP exam. So let's use a nice example. What's the height of the first rectangle? It is four. How do you get four? You take two in and square it and you get four. Cool. Now, how do I get the height of the second rectangle? And I get 16. So I multiply that out and I get 40. So 40 is the estimation for the area. Underestimation or overestimation? A gross overestimation, agreed? We want to get better. So if we want to get better, we should increase the number of rectangles. Go ahead, see if you can do four. Go. Everybody, did you get 30? Great. So 30, is it a better estimation than the 40? Sure looks like it. Is it still an overestimation? Definitely still an overestimation. You can see the blue rectangles I'm drawing here. They're definitely an overestimation. Notice how I continue to talk about that. It's an important concept that we come back to, overestimation or underestimation. You can view it graphically. You don't just know ahead of time. You do the eight on your own. If there are eight rectangles, what's the width of each one? The width is going to be one half. Go ahead, see if you can calculate that area. Go. You got 25.5? Cool. That, it, it's getting better, isn't it? Like you can see it dropped off 10, then it dropped off 4.5. If we did 16, it would definitely get better, wouldn't it? There's going to come a time where I can show you how to do it exact. And that's going to when we do an infinite number of rectangles and after that. But it, it is pretty cool to see that there. What I want you to do is I want you to turn to your worksheet I just handed out. And what I have now for you is the first two problems on that worksheet, you're given different functions. The first one is negative x squared plus 4x plus 7. And then the next one is uh, 2 to the x. Okay. Now, these came out to be really nice numbers here. In your problem, they might not come out to be really nice numbers. Okay. But let's set the first part up together. We make sure that you're having success and ready to go forward. So you're ready to start your assignment. Okay. I'm going to pause this.